Welcome to our third unit on formatting a document in Word 2013. In this unit we're going to look at page setup in general. We're going to look in particular at setting page size and page margins, at some aspects of paper settings as well, and we're going to look at a very straightforward example of turning a document into a multiple column document. We're going to use the pizza document again as the basis for looking at page setup. But just before we start, I'd like to mention something about the latest version. In the latest version, we added some headings and started to add a little bit of style to the document. Earlier on in the course, I showed you the navigation pane and I mentioned that one of the options with the navigation pane is to find particular headings. So now that we've got some headings, let's have a look at that. If I click on the View tab, and then show the navigation pane in the way that we did before. Notice that with the headings option chosen you now see a list of the headings in the document. Starting at heading level 1, what is pizza? Is pizza healthy? Good or bad? These are all heading level 1 terms. And then within a heading level 1 term here, good or bad, we have some heading level 2. So what are the key problems with pizza? How to make healthier pizza? At each level, you may see a little wedge symbol like this that enables you to expand or collapse that level. So, good or bad, I could collapse down to just a heading 1. You know that there are headings below it because of the presence of the wedge. The two earlier heading 1 headings, of course, don't have wedges, which means that there are no lower level headings below them. But if you click on the wedge next to good or bad, you can expand to see the lower level headings which may in turn of course have wedges and heading levels below them. We're going to look at the document outline a little bit later on in the course but for now that's worth knowing about. If you wanted to jump to a particular heading such as the very last one how to make healthier pizza you could use the navigation pane to do that just click on how to make healthier pizza and it will take you to that heading. Let's move on now to page setup. So far, whichever document I've been working on, I've had it set at my default size, which is A4. Most people in the UK and Europe have their default size set to A4. Many people in North America have their set to letter. And around the world, obviously, different locales have different default sizes. Now, I'm going to talk about how to set defaults a little bit later on in the course. But for now, let's look at one or two very straightforward ways of doing basic page setup for a document. Now, to make this part easier for you to follow, I'm just going to make this document a little bit smaller and appear a little bit more completely in the window. Now, I'm going to go to the Page Layout tab. Now the Page Layout tab contains many of the commands that you'll use in order to set up your pages. And the first one we're going to look at is in the Page Setup group on the left and its orientation. If I click on that, I have two choices. I have Portrait or I have Landscape. And it's that easy to switch between them. Next let's look at Page Size still on the page layout tab there's a size button next to orientation a list of standard options there includes a letter and A4 and then right at the bottom more paper sizes lets you define a custom size it's worth bearing in mind here that when it comes to custom sizes you can choose some pretty extreme sizes and shapes of pieces of paper but of course that doesn't mean that the printer you're using can actually print that size of paper. You may also, if you're for instance doing some kinds of cards or invitations, you may be printing more than one page on a sheet of paper. So this can become quite complicated. But for the moment, let's keep it relatively straightforward. You've seen here letter size measured in centimeters here. If I wanted to change to a different standard size I could just select it. So if I wanted to change to A4 that would show the size of A4 there again in centimeters in this case. If I wanted to go for a custom size then the bottom option there is custom size and then I could choose any width I like 
any height I liked. And bearing in mind the warning just now about being able to print on funny sized paper, you can pretty much do whatever you like here. A couple of other useful options here that I'll just mention briefly. One of them is that if you have a printer that has more than one tray, so you may have a printer that can take headed paper in one of its trays, you could choose here for example to say that the first page of a document takes paper from the tray which has got headed paper in it. You also have a preview here of what the size and shape you've chosen will look like. So if I for instance chose a very narrow document size for the width for the paper I'd see a very narrow piece of paper. And then as we'll see later on you can divide a document into sections and you can have different sizes for the different sections of the document. At the moment this very bottom control here that says apply to whole document means that whatever size I choose will apply it to the whole document. We'll talk more about print options later on but for now that's how you can set a custom page size. Now you may have noticed that when I selected custom from the size button just now I got this page setup dialog with the paper tab selected and in fact if I were to click the margins button now in the page setup group on the page layout tab I would also get this page setup dialog with margins selected. Let me just cancel this now and rather than do that Note there's a launcher here and the launcher actually brings that dialog up as well and I can get to margins that way as well. Now the margins are very important. There are a default set of normal margins and you can have wider or narrower margins as well. Notice that this margins tab in the page setup dialog also contains push buttons for the orientation options here. So in fact, whatever you want to do on page setup, virtually all of it can be done from this dialog box that you can also access from the launcher. So let's have a look at margins. On this occasion, what I'm going to do, let me just cancel that. and Let me just click margins here. Note normal is selected. Let's go for narrow margins. Just watch what happens in the pizza document. You notice how more of the text fits on the page because the margins are much narrower. And in fact, if I went for wide margins, you can probably guess what happens. I get much less on each page because the margins are much wider. And there is, of course, a custom margins option. And you probably guess where that takes you. Back onto the margins tab in the page setup dialog where you can set custom margins as well. So, I just have a couple of other things to cover on page setup in this unit. First of all, if you set up a particular combination of size, margins and so on, there's a button down the bottom left there, Set as Default, which you can use to set as your default set of page setup settings. So that would give you your default size, margins and so on, which can be pretty useful. And there's one other option here which I quickly want to look at and if you go back to the page setup group over here there is a columns option. Let me cancel page setup. Let's go back to that columns option and this is how you make a document into being a multi-column document. So supposing I wanted to make is pizza a healthy option into a two-column document it really is pretty straightforward it's now a two column document. If I were to change its orientation to say landscape then Word 2013 adjusts everything accordingly including the margins. So I'm going to change this pizza document to being a landscape document with two columns. I'm going to reset it to have narrow margins and I'm going to save that as version 5 and what I'd like you to do as your next exercise, very straightforward, I'd like you to take the Luxembourg version 3 document and save it with a page size of letter. It can stay portrait, single column, normal margins, just needs to have a page size of letter. My answer to that is version 4 of the document about Luxembourg.
In this unit we've looked at some general aspects of page setup and then we've looked specifically at setting page size, page margins and some of the available paper settings. We've also looked at a very simple example of turning a document into a multi-column document. That's the end of this unit, I'll see you in the next one.